We are about to commence recording in less than... Hello and a warm welcome to the CNBC Africa special coming to you live from the sidelines of the tourism in Daba, which is currently in session here at the Durban International Convention Center. Now today's broadcast is brought to you in partnership with Durban Tourism and part of this is to unpack strategies that have been highlighted to really position and enhance opportunities for economic growth within the tourism sector here in Durban. Several investments from private sector players. How do we perform against the macroeconomic landscape uh, regarding South Africa's economic performance? And of course, attaining inclusive economic growth for all participants in the tourism sector are just a few of the themes that we look to unpack. Now, to put things into perspective, 2016 was a very difficult year for South Africa economically with muted economic growth recorded for the year. However, from a tourism perspective, South Africa saw a 13% increase in international visitors. That's more than 10 million people who visited the country in the last 12 months. And to put that in context, that's almost the size of the population of KwaZulu-Natal visiting the country overall. So with that said, it's quite evident why tourism has been dubbed the new gold for South Africa's economy to really unleash and unlock economic performance. Well, to help us expand on this particular theme further, I have a wonderful panel with me, experts as well as stakeholders within different fraternities of the tourism sector, not only within the city of Durban, but South Africa as a whole. Starting with my guest closest to my right, Philip Sitole, Deputy City Manager for Eteguini Economic Development and Head of Durban Tourism, followed by Majaji Ramawela, the Chief Executive Officer for Tourism Business Council of South Africa, Marcel von Olock, the CEO of Tsoho Sun, and Dumile Tele, CEO of the Durban Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We are also joined by wonderful audience members who are stakeholders themselves within the tourism vicinity and uh, locally international participants too who are all part of the 7,000 delegates who have gathered here for the tourism in Daba. You two at home can participate with us in conversation by sharing your views and uh, unpacking some of the insight that will come through the conversation today. The hashtag to use, one of many, hashtag Indaba2017, hashtag Durban Indaba, and of course adding uh, the account name at Durban Tourism to your tweets. Let's get into the conversation and really unpack what has become a really exciting sector and I am actually quite grateful given that I've had the opportunity to interact with many of you uh, within the last uh, four to five years and really unpack some of the opportunities uh, and uh, themes that have come through within business development and tourism development on the continent and in the city of Durban. Philip, I'd like to start off with you. Mm. Perhaps back in 2013 when the overriding theme of taking Durban to the world uh, was just initiated and uh, conversations were underway with regard to sister cities and strategic partners uh, to come on board. Give us a sense as to how far we've come in the last few years uh, regarding the initial plan that was implemented and the uh, gains that we've actually managed to make. Well, uh, the city of Devon has um, done so many things since then. Um, part of it was to work with the private sector uh, to, faci to facilitate uh, major investments both in the south uh, and also in the north of Devon. Um, we, what, I mean, part of the work that we do uh, in, in our class that is to deal with the approvals of, of plans for the investors, um, zonings and so on. So we are excited that um, quite recently um, a, a plan for the expansion of the Bay Valley Hills has been approved. Um, we were working on the approvals of the Ocean Zumhlanga it has taken off the ground, um, we, which is, I mean, that investment is billions of friends. It's going to have international brands. Um, further north, we were dealing with the King's Estate investment, um, facilitating the approvals um, for that investment, which is worth more than 46 billion rand over a period of 10 years. Um, there is a report that is going to council next week, um, which is a final report and after that report, the investors would then uh, be able to, I mean, to start the project. 
So that is in, in as far as um, capital investment is concerned. But remember that the city also provides bulk, in, bulk infrastructure uh, for such projects. And such bulk uh, costs the city uh, hundreds of millions. So it's, it's a, it's a private-public partnership. Then coming back to how do we attract uh, visitors to the city, we can't attract them um, if we don't have proper infrastructure. So we have not forgotten that the one of our jewels is the, is the beachfront. So I'm happy to state that the promenade is going to be extended, the beachfront promenade is going to be extended from Oshaga Marine to the waterfront. And the city has set aside um, close to 200 million rand for that extension. Um, the pro we anticipate that the project would start around October. Provision of the bulk uh, wa water uh, uh, supply uh, to the uh, point waterfront. Um, uh, the, the project is currently on tender. We are hoping that uh, come no uh, October, November, we are starting uh, with that project. Mm -hmm. So there are so many other things that we have done as the city, um, which are, uh, are, 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 I mean, are necessary for, uh, for tourism investment. Mm. Indeed. Well, you've highlighted quite a few opportunities, and I want us to also unpack those in the future uh, with regard to uh, the economic potential and the spin-offs for uh, small and medium enterprises. But you did mention the promenade, and Marcel, that clearly brings us to you, given the investment. 220 million rand, if I'm not mistaken, was invested back in 2013 to see upgrades to some of your facilities, as well as uh, what is now being dubbed the Golden Mile. Uh, give us a sense of uh, initial investment, how we've uh, managed to witness a significant amount of return on investment uh, regarding this partnership that is also taken in place with the city of Durban? So the improvement in the, in the beachfront has been, it's definitely paid off for us. Um, you know, Durban has exceptionally good infrastructure, actually. It doesn't have an infrastructure problem, it's got a demand problem. You need more people coming in. We've seen, since we started putting money into the, into the refurbishment of the hotels and so on, there's definitely a shift of business back to Durban city versus just Mslanga and your outlying areas. Um, the hotels are trading at higher occupancy, we're getting better rates than we did before. Mm. So, so the investment into the, the Durban city infrastructure has worked. I, I think the urban decay has been reversed. Which, and the starting point of that was the 2010 upgrade of the beachfront. If that hadn't had happened, I, I think Durban probably would have lost its, its core infrastructure in, in downtown. So that, that has worked. There's a lot of work to be done because the, the good part of Durban is the beachfront. If you go a little bit back, you, you back into derelict buildings, um, uh, the, the classic urban decay scenario in, in older South African cities. But the city is working on that and they will, they will get that portion back. Um, so we're very happy with the money that we put into the beachfront. Uh, and that's exactly what we want to hear, positive progress and not just yeah. a, a talk. But I, I'm, I'm wishing I was seeing a little bit more excitement here. You should be saying exactly. We spoke about it. We got the job done. We should be getting pats on our back for this, right? It's working. The, the interesting thing about Durban is that it is still very um, local, local tourism focused. In, you spoke about the big increase in international tourism, 13% uh -huh. up over the, the last year. That is going into Cape Town and it's going into your bush lodge type environment. It's not hitting Joburg and it's not hitting Durban. And that's a problem. Uh, and I, we still have to work on getting that growth to flow through to Durban. Let's unpack that. So do we start with the infrastructure to ensure that uh, there's a, a sufficient development and also change in infrastructure mindset? Infrastructure in Durban is good. It's infrastructure in Durban is good. good. It's a demand thing. It's, it's your air access. Is, the Cape Town's worked very hard at getting your international access direct into Cape Town working well. They've done well on that. Durban is working on it. They, they still don't have enough air access into Durban. That, that will change the environment. And then it's, it's by and large PR and, and management of the, the marketing of tourism to Durban. It has so much to offer. And people forget, 15, 20 years ago, Cape Town, as a hotel owner, was, to put it mildly, a dog investment. You, know, you had a terrible winter period that lasted eight months, not two like it does now. It, it was not a great return on, on building infrastructure in Cape Town. That turned as you've built that international market coming through. And you see it in the stats. I mean, the, they're running at 70% year round, including winter period. Durban sitting at mid 60s, Joburg sitting at low 60s. That, that drive of marketing into, into Durban is your, your key. And it's your biggest opportunity here. You've got the infrastructure. It's bringing people in.
got the infrastructure development still taking place from an aviation perspective, which we will unpack uh, after the uh, ad break uh, with Hamish Erskine, uh, Chief Executive of the Durban Trade Port, in just a moment. But you mentioned something so critical, driving that traffic into the city of Durban. And that obviously brings us to uh, the opportunity to unpack this further. Majaji, I'd like to start with you. That 10 million. As I mentioned, that's basically the size of the population within KZN, but we need more of that to flow within the city of Durban and then through other aspects, uh, maybe within the pro province as well as um, uh, the country. How do we do that given the macroeconomic backdrop that we see South Africa in? You've been asked this question throughout the tourism in Daba, and I'll pose it to you again. Credit downgrade, weaker rand dollar exchange rate, uh, muted confidence, uh, and uh, maybe not a positive uh, environment uh, where it's easy to market and sell South Africa and the city of Durban right now. How do we get that right? How do we change that narrative and find opportunity even within these distressed times? I think I want to start by agreeing with what Marcel is saying that, um, you know, Durban has got it all. Um, and um, the really, the, 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 where the hard work has to go in is into marketing. And I think the marketing is, it has to be seen within the context that says you need to talk up Durban. Um, and it starts with the locals uh, talking up Durban. Um, but also the stakeholders that are involved uh, in the industry, uh, the two operators, um, the hotels <coughs> and everybody. That's, that's where the real work is going to be. Because one of the biggest problems for South Africa, um, as, a, as a country in particular, I mean, we're not really just talking about Durban per se, is that we don't talk up our, our country. And, and so we need our own people to be ambassadors of our country, ambassadors of the city, uh, this, that this is the city to visit. And, and uh, you know, we already, Durban is already up there in terms of domestic tourism, as Marcella said. Uh, but we have regional tourism that we need to tap into. We have then the international market to tap in, and all of that. You can do all the marketing you want. But if your people are not talking up your, 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 your destination, that's where lies the problem. But part of talking about um, talking up your destination, it's also about getting your people involved. And it comes back to your issue around inclusive growth. Uh, because we need to do, we need to get the message of tourism to our people. Okay. It's not about talking about it. We, people need to do tourism. This is why the, the campaign around do I do tourism is very important. Politicians need to say I do tourism, I walk tourism, um, because in that we, we begin to get that message filtering into our communities, into our people, our youth. Uh, because you know to just talk about tourism being the new gold without people seeing the visible benefits of that, it becomes a, a challenge. And so this is this is some of the multiple challenges that we need we need to address um, as a destination going forward. Mm -hmm. Initiatives are taking place, and I can confidently say that from a Durban Chamber perspective, hashtag Durban Must Rise is just one of those initiatives to change the mindset, as you say, and cultivating that culture uh, of astuteness as well as pride within the city of Durban from within. So far, uh, have we seen progress within the shift in the mindset and uh, increased awareness, not only from large uh, corporations that you represent, but also SMMEs? Google, I think um, as the Durban Chamber, we really have seen a lot of progress taking place in Durban. So um, what we are able to facilitate is a joint stakeholder environment where all the stakeholders involved in tourism, our city very much involved, our province, private sector, but big and small business. And I think as organized business, what we are able to really do, and we are beginning to facilitate and see that picking up momentum is creating a platform for the ecosystem of tourism to work. And you know, um, listening to the amount of investment that has gone in from an infrastructure point of view, from a private sector <coughs> point of view, you know, hearing that amount of investment that's already in place, we are trying to drive a strategy that says, let's literally unleash a, a bigger return on the investment that has been put in. And how do we do that? We ensure that we co-package Durban um, um, here speaks about um, talking up Durban. And I think what's so important is how we repackage our tourism um, offering, how we find the differentiators that will bring people to Durban. And I think what we are beginning to see is being able to integrate the traditional offerings, as we've heard, with township tourism, with all the various other tourisms that have um, been more in the outlying areas and begin to package Durban. And I think it's the same model that needs to work for South Africa and Africa for that matter. And um, I think the um, other point that I'd like to make is that, you know, the fact that we've uh, managed to keep tourism in Dava in Durban for the next um, few years, I'm hoping that South Africa will make a decision to just make it a Durban event so that the world knows this is where it happens because it's in, it's, um, in us making sure that 
we absolutely peg down such offerings as a country, as a region, as Africa, that will begin to attract the more foreign invest, uh, more external or international market, as well as um, getting the locals involved. Very true. Uh, key critical themes that you've uh, clearly highlighted there, and I want us to touch on the packaging element. Uh, and Philip, that brings me back to you with regard to uh, some of the themes that you highlighted regarding driving investment uh, locally and internationally uh, to ensure that there is this culture of incorporation. But I want to add another element to it, which has also been brought up by the panelists. How do we ensure that we bring smaller players along with us? It's one thing for Marcel, with all due respect, to make a profit as investors. Uh, uh, we, we need to see that, but also to ensure that Marcel procures his uh, uh, products and services and helps develop uh, the younger entrepreneurs as well as smaller co corporates uh, along with him. I'd like to start with you and open that up to the panel to get uh, a variety of views. Yes, maybe one would like to go back to the point that was <coughs> talked about, um, which, which is about uh, people of Devon talking positively about Devon. I mean, we have, as Devon Tourism, we have uh, taken that a, ste a step further. Uh, by uh, appointing a, a destination marketing um, company uh, based in the U.S. because U.S. is one of the uh, leading uh, source markets for South Africa and Durban. But um, we are going to be appointing two more um, uh, destination marketing companies um, uh, for Europe as well as uh, Australia. Uh, but we need to work together with Tourism Guazulu Natal uh, because they've got other initiatives of attracting uh, foreign visitors to come to, uh, to Deben, Guazulu, Natal. But I think the other thing that we need to do is to um, combine investments, when you talk investments and tourism, mm. so we need to project Deben, Guazulu, Natal as, an, uh, as a destination for both. I think at the moment um, it's not integrated. So one of the things that we are going to be doing um, um, come the next financial year is to talk destination Deben, uh, which talks about investments, talks about visitors to uh, to Deben, uh, Guazulu Natal. Coming to the issues of uh, economic transformation, um, tourism is one of the leading sectors, um, so it's one of the areas that is, um, I mean, which has less uh, transformation, if I can put it that way. So there's still a lot of work to be done uh, towards <coughs> that, but there are things that we can do. As, as the city that Give we can... Give three examples or objectives that the city is trying to do to change the transformation element. Yes. The first one will be doing it through the infrastructure development. That we, you remember I, I indicated that we provide um, um, bulk infrastructure. So the 30% uh, principle is going to apply. Um, uh, the city has taken a decision already on that. That in all major contracts uh, the 30% is non-negotiable. 30% alludes to uh, participation of? 30% goes to the participation of black businesses, Africans in particular. The second point that relates to that, it's the issue of women, youth, and military veterans. They have to be, I mean, to be players. So a decision has been taken. There's another report that is going to council in the next meeting, in the next sitting of council, which will be um, talking about specific sectors and specific projects where this thing must apply. Okay. So we are serious about it. Then this, the second area is on expanding the cake. Um, in the main, for now, we are talking about Umslanga, the beachfront, south of Devon. We want to see tourism going to disadvantaged communities. That is part of our strategy. Thirdly, it's around the, uh, the pillars that we use to market, um, I mean, the professional services. So that's another area. So those are the three areas uh, which we are targeting um, in, in the next financial year. But in doing that, we'll be mindful of making sure that we don't upset the, I mean, our interventions must not upset the, I mean, the, the growth trajectory sure. uh, that is there. But um, we are going to be radical in doing it. That's why we are bringing another report to council so that we become very specific. Last point is on the private sector investment. I mean, guys like uh, Marcel, we cannot dictate to them, but when we, uh, when, when we do approvals, we want them to tell us, I'm talking about the entire private uh, sector, private investment, you have to tell us how are you going to address the issues around economic um, empowerment.
Indeed. Marcel, let's hear from you. Yeah, clearly, these conversations take place, and hopefully uh, you can bring them forward. How have you, as Soho San, participated in some of these initiatives? And uh, Majaji and Dumile, please feel free to come in. So not to pick a fight with Philip on TV, but <laughs> yeah. fundamentally, we don't really have a big issue because where I disagree is that tourism is the one industry that is very transformed, um, ignoring white Marcel sitting here. Soho is, I think, number three on the stock exchange in empowerment companies. Uh, holding companies number two, uh, Sun International, our biggest competitors, like number seven. Um, what was driven largely by the casino industry because it was a post-94 industry that came out, empowerment became a, an absolute must-do, otherwise you didn't get licenses and you certainly don't keep your licenses. So we have, you know, we are black-owned, black-controlled. We have an enormous empowerment infrastructure in there. It's very much part of our DNA. Uh, when we talk about how we develop small businesses and so on, we have an entrepreneur's program that covers about 200 businesses. Um, from guest houses to jewelry manufacturing to cleaning services to and this you name it. The sustainability element and it, regarding it brings Australia. it all in, and it's in everything that we do. Uh, every single decision we make, from investment to employment to etc., is driven by uh, BE requirements, by transformation, etc. So ignoring the sort of view of, of government that there's always more, we are actually very well positioned on that, um, and it's one of the reasons we don't really have a problem when we deal with cities when we deal with some because we actually once we sit there we've got a level two rating under the new codes we're in a very good position on that stuff mm -hmm. um, the one thing I would say uh, that is difficult at the moment which is where all of this comes out of and it, it's important that people listen to the Reserve Bank listen to Treasury back in 2006 7 8 when we were growing at 5% there was no talk of radical economic transformation there wasn't a talk of inclusive growth there wasn't a talk of anything because everybody was making money the world was doing well if you get back to that type of growth, you will include people. The demand for services, suppliers, etc., goes through the roof. When you're sitting at 0% GDP, you have a big problem. You are not going to get, you can try and manipulate things, but you actually, you're not growing the economy, you're not bringing people into it. If you get back to economic growth, these problems actually sort themselves out. There's no amount of social engineering that will ever fix a lack of economic growth in the economy. Mm -hmm. Bring that back, your volumes go up, your trade goes up, your visitors go up, everything works. Management looks like heroes, we all make bonuses, but actually it's the GDP that makes it work. So we have to get back to economic growth, and most of the problems we talk about on a day-to-day -day basis will fade into the background. Machachi? I just wanted to say that um, one of the things we need to, to embrace as South Africa, and I think, like you said, it's been the conversation during Davos. We have to grow the cake. You talk about packaging. Um, and, and part of that is to, you know, I wanted to, three things that I think the city need to, to be able to do, and Philip and I have these conversations. One of those is that the embracing of the private sector here, the existing private sector um, that is here, Durban and the, and the KwaZulu Natal need to be able to bring to, uh, start having, uh, attracting uh, some of the major packages, people who actually are in the channel. Um, you know, because if you've got them here, living here, you've got them appreciating uh, what Durban has and appreciating the development that are going on here, they start including Durban into the packages and they speak to their international partners to include Durban in the packaging. So it goes back to what I was saying that it, you can do the marketing in terms of we are on CNBC, we are on this and this and that, but this, people are very suspicious of, uh, you know, companies saying we are, we are fantastic, but people want their locals here. and so. Part of that business is for, for, for the city to attract some of the channel operators to be based in Durban mm -hmm. and in KwaZulu Natal to be able to start packaging what they interact with on a daily basis. That's the first thing. I think the second thing is we need to, as South Africa and as the city of Durban, we need to begin to understand that we need to create new opportunities. We need to innovate, entrepreneurs yeah. as well, because in there comes newness. Because you know, one of the things we don't do too well in South Africa is the innovation <coughs> of our tourism offer, offering. You know, we sell the same things, the same packages over and over and over again. Mm. But, and, and, you know, the international community is are telling us that, the buyers are telling us, they come here and say, what's new? You know, so we need to be able to say, this is what's new. Um, uh, because we, sometimes I, I look at cases, and I mean, I used to live here, and I look at it and think, wow, this is actually world in one as a province. So how, how are we innovating what we are selling about KZN? That's the second thing. The next thing is about, you talked earlier on about airline and connectivity. Again, you know, no airline wants to fly to a destination when, for instance, they can't fill the front seat at the front of the airplane. But most importantly, they, that destination doesn't go into partnership with them to make sure that they become top of mind. 
um, as a destination and therefore that flying to that destination become viable for them. So we can attract all the airlines to come in here, but if we are not innovating, we're not showing them different, the differentiator, um, you know, but Durban versus, what is it Durban that offers that Cape Town doesn't offer? What does Durban offer that Joburg doesn't offer? And, and I mentioned earlier on, domestic, there's a whole regional, uh, region of Africa of tourists mm. that we need to talk to. Mm. And then the other thing, Google, is about reaching new markets. You know, why must we all go fishing in the UK? You know, most of our operators are, are fishing in the UK. There are new markets to be discovered in the world, and we need to reach out to those places because they don't know South Africa. And those are the, where the opportunity comes in. Uh, people who don't know, that have no uh, historical reference to uh, the experience of Devon, and that, those are some of the things we need to explore. And that, that's an opportunity where new uh, micro enterprises and big enterprises, emerging entrepreneurs can come in. Very true. Just uh, maybe to uh, make an example of where it's working. So as the Durban Chamber, um, the voice of business, representing a lot of the private sector um, players in the city, big and small, in partnership with our city, we've got a program whereby we are beginning to activate township economy. And one of the areas is township um, tourism. And what um, one of the um, projects that we are doing is activating <coughs> Wi-Fi connectivity in the township. Now I'm coming back to the point around being creative and innovative in, in how we redefine our offerings. And I think that's beginning to speak um, to, to that. And not only Wi-Fi connectivity, what we are doing is putting in place um, enterprise development programs mm -hmm. where we are literally going in with and what you find in Durban, and I'm hoping that the rest of South Africa will, will learn and Africa, you've got a lot of um, township tourism um, associations, yes. if I can call it that, business associations working together. So in partnership with those, we are able to find um, those entrepreneurs and just begin to support them in terms of the enterprise development and, and just polish, help them become more uh, marketable. Mm. And together with the entire offering that Durban has, and I sit here with Marcel, I was just saying how, how much we've been doing um, with Zoho San. So with those um, um, established brands, we are able to put it together and um, bring it to the world in terms of um, offering something that is a bit more creative. That's true, and very different and creative and also differentiating that environment. We are under pressure to go to an ad break, but I'm going to ask for a brief extension of two minutes because I want to rattle the cage slightly. And again, coming to you, Marcel. Uh, uh, Dumile did mention the cultivation of township economies and ensuring that we open up the market and giving a creative offering. There's a creative offering that was established in Silicon Valley. It's made its way to many cities across the globe, including Durban, and that's Airbnb, uh, basically the Uber of the hotel and accommodation industry. Has that had any impact on uh, business development? Is it viewed as a, as a threat or as an opportunity, given that I understand, according to the most recent numbers, there was a 300% increase in Airbnb bookings in the city of Durban alone in 2016? So I guess, surprisingly, we're actually quite positive about Airbnb. Oh. Um, you know, the interesting thing is, and I'll use Cape Town as the example, it's running at historically high occupancies. The city is running at between 70 and 75% year round, which is, if you go over 70, you guaranteed new supplies coming in. So we're building 500 new rooms. There's 1,000 new rooms coming into Cape Town. There are something like 16,000 or 18,000 Airbnb offerings in Cape Town, and we're still running at historically high occupancies. Mm. You, your analogy to Uber is true. Uber might have a big fight with the established metered taxi operations. What Uber's done is it's opened the taxi industry way bigger than it ever was in the metered environment. There are more people using Uber than ever used meter taxis. There are more people employed by Uber than ever were in the meter taxi industry. So there's, there's a sort of traditional business dying, but the overall industry is much, much bigger. And I see Airbnb as the same. It's just another offering, particularly in the leisure side, that brings people into places. So we're actually quite positive about it. We don't see it as a threat to our corporate business, our, our traditional um, people that work market that comes to us. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of those things, if you fight it, you're actually just locking a city off from growth. 
so we see it as a positive. Exactly, and on that note, to build up on the township economy's development, Airbnb, if I decide in Umla Zigasi, I'll decide to rent out my house, or, or are there opportunities for capital investors like yourself to actually say, well, you know what, we'll go to Guamashu and open a hotel there anyway uh, uh, to add channel. more to the... It's a channel. So what it does is it allows a small bed and breakfast, a person with... It started with, like, you've got a spare room, a couch, you can that sort of thing, but it allows you to access a market. And, and your access to the market is your biggest barrier. And if you go really back to the old days, you stuck a notice up at the airport and there was a little tag you took and phoned this number. It doesn't work. You've got to have access to the market. Airbnb gives you access that you could never do as a small operator somewhere. We spend a fortune on channels, on web development, etc. There's no way as a small operator can do that. It's a, it's a great way to unlock the tourism industry. Uh, Dumila, to close up with you, are we capitalizing on this enough, though, to encourage SMEs to make use of some of these platforms? So, for example, Google, the Wi-Fi connectivity that I spoke about, taking it to the township using, um, you know, the developments in fiber, et cetera. So what the, one of the um, channels that we are putting on that is what we are calling Durban Procure, www Durban Procure. What that is, is yet another channel which allows the buyer to meet the supplier. So. Buyers enroll, suppliers enroll. So now our small businesses are automatically put on those um, platforms and can begin to put themselves and make them available for access to be, um, you know, to be procured from. But further than that, we've got another platform we're putting on that connectivity called Gift, Get Involved. And that's to allow volunteerism. You know, you spoke about civic pride. We spoke about getting our people as ambassadors. We've, we've created a platform in Durban that's going to allow the volunteer to find an opportunity to volunteer in, in terms of um, getting involved in building some of these opportunities we're speaking about. So it's also it's a platform to procure, buyer meet supplier, but also a, a platform for the volunteer to meet an opportunity that is um, vetted credible and they can get involved in terms of building what we want to build for ourselves. Exactly. Powerful note to leave it on. We'll come back to you in the after the break, uh, Majachi, but we do have to take a brief ad break over the next two minutes. Dumile Tele, thank you so much for joining us for the first half of the conversation, Chief Executive Officer of the Durban Chamber of Commerce and Industry. You might have heard a few moments ago uh, in the beginning of the conversation that aviation and opening up the city of Durban to our international participants is what's needed, and that's exactly what we're going to touch on in the second half of this conversation as we talk about development from an aviation space and perspective with Hamish Erskine, who's the CEO of the Dubai Trade Port. We'll be back after this. Ladies and gentlemen, about 30 seconds before we go back on air. If we could please um, get back to our seats, please. Ladies and gentlemen, there's about 30 seconds before we kick off. Ladies and gentlemen, 15 seconds before we on air.
Welcome back to the special CNBC Africa broadcast coming to you live from the Durban International Convention Center where the topic that we are unpacking is the strategic positioning of the city of Durban as a prime tourist destination globally. Now we're in the first half of the conversation we certainly looked at the hotel infrastructure. Now we're talking about aviation and opening up the uh, skies to ensure that there's more direct travel of foreign nationals uh, making their way or foreign uh, guests making their way into uh, the city of Durban and the province of KwaZulu Natal as a whole. To join us for that conversation is Hamish Erskine, CEO of the Dubai Trade Port, to help expand on this topic a little bit further. Hamish, good to have you with us and thank you for making time. I do actually want to do a quick litmus test with the audience. Given that we are hosting the tourism in Daba, it does mean that we are actually have the pleasure of hosting a lot of international guests. I want to gauge firstly how many of you in the audience are international guests, i.e. not from South Africa. By show of hands, don't be shy. To the two guests who are here in the room, did you fly directly into Durban? Both of you did. Okay, well, that's a good development. Progress making taking place and uh, uh, clearly on the back of uh, some negotiations and conversations that take place. Hamish is quite impressed by that and you should be, uh, uh, given that this is naturally the aim and objective of uh, Dubai Trade Port, not only from an airport <coughs> perspective, but easy access and movement of goods, people and services directly into the uh, city of Durban. Give us perspective as to how the numbers have grown and some of the agreements that have come out from the World Roots Convention, which was also held here in Durban just last year. No, thanks. Um, good morning, Guglietti, and, and thank you. Yeah, it, look, it's quite a complex thing, and I think Majaji touched on something, and, and Marcel touched on something. So perhaps just to maybe take it back as to why Dubai Trade Port is involved and, and, and why, how we see air services. Air services and the connectivity into an airport and into a city um, have a very strong stimulatory effect on the economy because it's not just tourism. You know, it's cargo, um, it's visiting business um, travelers, commercial travelers visiting friends and relatives. You know, in Durban, we also have ships crews that move and change here. So if you, the, more glo the more connectivity you have into a city, um, by far it stimulates a wide range. Your manufacturing sectors, for example, get stimulated by the cargo side. Um, so as Dubai Trade Port, you know, our, our role is as an economic development orientated company um, is to ensure that the, those air services come in and come in on a sustainable basis. Um, ultimately, what the impact there is, it does have the positive impact on tourism um, because you, you're obviously creating um, a new direct connection into the destination. Um, the aviation interest in industry is a very complex one, and I think the, the, um, the thing that must be kept in mind, you know, uh, the, the Cape Town process was mentioned and then Majaji was mentioning the front of the aircraft. And maybe just to explain where Durban and Cape Town are, in, in comparison to each other. Air Access, which is the project that Cape Town are running, and then ours is Durban Direct, you might see our, our brand around the place. Um, it's very much about the market that you are serving. <coughs> now, um, when you are Cape Town and you've had a, your, your, your tourism product has really matured to such a degree that you've created these very strong markets, um, you can talk to the, um, the legacy carriers because the legacy carriers will only ever come, when I talk legacy carriers, I'm talking about the big BAs, the KLMs, the, the Lufthansa's, these type of airlines. They, they don't expand quickly, you know, one, two new routes a year, and you know, they're very cautious about it, and they're very yield orientated. So they must fill the front of the airplane, and they must make sure that that is a, well, a market that's got a strong dollar or euro or pound base, and you know, then they, they, they will make this as, if you look at what's happened in Cape Town, that's what's really happened. You've had the expansion of, and the increase in, in, in fact, of, of frequencies more than anything of direct con connections into the markets in Europe and in London and others. In Durban, we started, and I think it, it goes back to this question of marketing and where you are in the marketing cycle and how much of that international market you've captured. We've had to fight for our aviation space in a very different tactic. Um, we've had to look at the network carriers. Who are the major network carriers in the world? And really, um, the, the airlines that have invested a lot in new fleet and, and that are able to sustain services into secondary cities like Durban are obviously Emirates, Qatar, on the African continent, Ethiopian, very strong, brand new fleet, excellent airline, uh, and Turkish. They've had their challenges, but they've done a similar thing. They've invested in very large fleets. 
Now, if you are a secondary city and you haven't yet established that big channel where you can go to a BA and say, we can guarantee your yield on this market, we can guarantee them seat capacity. I mean, we will fill an, an aircraft every night from Durban to London. There's no, no question about that. Can we meet the yield requirement that would allow BA to say, okay, we're not going to do Austin, Texas. We're going to do Durban. And it, that's kind of the competing market you're in. Because, um, and for that to happen, you must have that very established traveler pattern. So in Durban, what we've gone for is, you know, by going for those network carriers, um, where, you know, we have a relationship with Ethiopian, um, and the ones I mentioned, Emirates, um, Turkish, uh, Qatar, and then a number of regional carriers in Namibia who do Gaborone and Vintuk for us, um, you know, Nam um, Harari, Lusaka. Um, and then obviously a very fast growing US market, which Philip mentioned, really, really strong numbers. Um, we've, we've then said, well, by going with those four or five network carriers, we can actually access on a one-stop basis 700 destinations globally. Now that's significant. So that starts to bring air travel, maybe to mention maybe some of the other things that since 2010, by doing that and by that strategy, our number of international travelers in real terms in Durban has grown 160%. So from 2010 to now, 160% more people, this is not, and this is not just people that are now going direct from Durban instead of fly, flying to Joburg. This is a new market, a bit like the Uber example that Marcel used. Mm -hmm. You're actually widening and opening up a whole industry and market. And these, are, at the moment, generally tend to be Durban travelers, um, South African travelers, um, those tourists that, that are visiting Durban. But it's a very wide range when you look at, look at the destinations and how we serve it. So what it's doing is it's very definitely stimulating international travel. There's no question about that. Last year we had a compounded 27% growth rate, um, which is incredible in a 0% economic um, uh, GDP growth environment. So it's working. It's definitely working. But our strategy is different, and we involve far more players. So we involve the city, we involve TRKZN, we involve the private sector, as many people as we can in the Provincial Route Development Committee to make sure that we're trying to really leverage every little bit of you know, energy there is in Durban for Makes services. Sense. Yeah. A very multi-pronged approach, and as you yeah. say, with partners also involved, the city is also not just perceived to be a, a play stop, but also one for business, uh, for, for trade, uh, for investment opportunities that can expand across the continent. Uh, I want us to tap further into this multi-pronged approach to ensure that uh, the people on those uh, international direct flights are not just uh, from Durban or purely South African or just in for a brief trip uh, and don't expand the opportunities that are available here. And maybe tying it into uh, some of the themes that were highlighted in the first half of the conversation that the breach front looks good, uh, north coast of uh, Durban looks fantastic, but how do we ensure that as you penetrate into uh, the inner city that we do see this shake up? And I do understand that this has often been brought up as a, uh, an area of concern, uh, uh, and maybe we can point to the Point Waterfront example, fantastic opportunity for investment and ca uh, uh, capital deployment, but the surrounding facility uh, uh, still needs uh, a bit of a shake up and a clean up. Philip, how far are we on that one? And Majaji, you feel free to um, uh, give us your view on the business environment and impact on these levels of confidence. Yeah, well, it's a, a very uncomfortable uh, topic. <laughs> that we'll tackle, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, more especially if you are going to be compared to Cape Town. Um, but we, we, we have to deal with it. Um, I think the first thing that we, if we are going to do comparison between the two cities, we need to understand that these two cities are not the same historically and even what is happening currently. So um, we, we are very serious as the city of Deben to use our spe special planning uh, to promote social cohesion. Mm -hmm. So the dirtiness and the cleanliness must not be used uh, in order to move back the previously disadvantaged communities that they should not come into the city. I'm raising this point because at times this is used so as to um, kick out certain racial groups. I um, don't want to talk about the other city, but if you look at that city and compare to what is happening in Deben, uh, that contrast uh, will tell you what's, what's going on. The second point. There's some memories from the audience. So let's yeah. tackle that even exactly. further. How are we yeah. going to approach it exactly. then? Yeah. Right? In, yes. in, in a strategy yeah. and in a yes. manner yeah, that to, is best yes. suited to the city yeah. of Durban. I want, so I want, I want to come inclusion. to it. Yeah. So, but I thought it's important. Yeah. Because 
at times the cleanliness uh, it comes with the exclusion of certain people economically. Now coming to how, how the city is going to deal with the, these issues, um, we've got an urban renewal program um, that was approved by council in December last year. Um, the the urban renewal program it has to be funded. Um, come uh, I think next week, council is approving funding. Um, is, I mean we are we are we are adopting the budget. For, seven, for, for the financial year 2017-2018, part of it will be having resources allocated towards uh, the urban renewal pro program uh, for the city, where um, um, I think Marcel spoke about uh, direct uh, buildings, on how we're going to deal with that. We need resources. Secondly, on how we are going to manage the informal economy within the city. Um, we've got a program because in certain areas we, we intend to remove, uh, relocate, I think, let me use that word, relocate certain traders to a certain precinct. Um, and we need to have a, a, a proper management system of, of, of managing uh, those informal traders. Thirdly, uh, is the private sector itself big players because they also contribute uh, to what is happening in the inner city. Um, uh, we've got buildings that uh, you don't know who the owners are. I mean, they're no longer in the city. Sure. We have to go to courts uh, to deal with those situations. It's not easy. Whereas if you compare, to, to compare this situation to Cape Town, the owners are still there. They did not, majority of them are still there. They did not leave the city. Last point is on um, the, uh, uh, the, the program within, I mean, the program that is managed by the municipality in cleaning the city. The mayor is serious about this matter. Um, um, in June, uh, mid-June, we are starting a program that is going to involve private sector and the political leadership in engaging with the small players, in this instance, um, it's informal traders, to make sure that um, as we provide infrastructure, as we maintain the infrastructure, but they must also play their role in making sure that the city is clean. Is there an, a, a huge enough incentive, if I can put it that way, because we know often when, when there's a change or, or gentrification takes place, uh, it's quite a sensitive matter uh, 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 and people need to be managed in an appropriate yeah, manner yes. uh, to ensure mm. that they also comply uh, mm. fully and efficiently. Yes, but I, I think, uh, Koko, the other point that we need to, to consider in these things, I, I agree with my colleagues that the city must be clean. It will be clean. We will do that. But I, I would like to urge them to be with us when we are faced with because that will come with certain challenges. And first people that are going to fill those challenges will be politicians. You must look at what happened in Joburg uh, during the previous administration when they were cleaning up the city. I mean, court challenges, marches to the city hall, shouting to the mayor, and so on and so forth. It's not an easy thing, but it has to be done. So now we would like to hear the private sector raising its voice. We're talking about raising the voice to market the city. When we are faced with such challenges, they must raise their voice to say the city is doing the right thing. They must be with us when we go to court. As long as there's a cohesive vision, right? Yes. Because they need to support something that they're also buying into. Well, the plan that I'm talking about, the urban renewal plan, it was workshopped, agreed to with, with, with all the role players. I'm not being defensive here, but I'm saying as we start in June, uh, we request all players to be with us because that journey is going to be tough. But Google, I think, I think uh, you know, Philip is my good friend, and uh, we talk about this thing all the time. I think, let's not compare Durban with Cape Town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's compare Durban with Miami. Yes? You were there last, last year, my friend. Sure. So, and, and uh, <laughs> I think the point one, one is trying to make, it's, Google, it's, it's not even about Philip having to defend himself or defend the city. Mm. One of the things we need to learn, it's not unique to Durban, it's, it's, it's the, the, to the country. We need to do things when they're supposed to be happened. If you let something decay, it's going to take you a long time for you to fix it up. One of the things that makes me sad about the city is that it's one of the most beautiful cities in this county. As I said, it's got so much around it uh, to keep tourists coming here. You know, this city used to buzz 30 years back, 30 years, 40 years back. We need to ask ourselves the story. You know, when we met in December, the, 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 the Big Front Partnership, we talked about this. We said, what is it that we did good? Uh, 40, uh, 30, 40 years, me and my friend here and, and um, my friend Michael, uh, Michael uh, from, uh, um, Mark Jackson from Tukosan, we started to say, what is it that we did 40 years ago that kept tourists coming here? Bus loads of tourists. Mm. We need to go back and find out exactly what is it that we did here. Cape Town was there, Joburg was there, but people were, 
coming here. People were coming into Mombasa. We were competing with the likes of Mombasa, we competing with the likes of Miami. Of course, they do big numbers. You know, so we need to go back to the, those issues. But the fact that we must, we must plan things, we must implement them. If we let these things decay, and then it's almost like you allow squatters to come to your, to your neighborhood and start building next door. One squatter stands here and they think, oh, you're doing nothing? All oh, right, okay, the rest of us, we all come. Next, you wake up tomorrow morning, there are hundreds of them. You know, and you want to get rid of 100? You should have got rid of the, of the one you came and camped yesterday. And I think for me, that's a, that's a big issue. We need to be able to learn the cities in this, in this country. That you have, in the business of tourism, you've got to keep your product fresh hmm. all the time. And that's what we need to do here. And earlier on, we were talking about the issue of inclusive growth. As part of cleaning up and keeping up with Joe Joneses, yeah, we bring our people in it. Because they equally want to be clean. You know, they also want to, to be in this business, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, provide the product in a very environment that tourists feel safe to be in it. So for me, I would like the city of Devon to be cleaned up to such an extent that people can feel safe to walk in the city, to walk in the beachfront, because that's what will keep people coming here. The next other thing is to make uh, Devon to attract uh, um, your kind of uh, citizens that people aspire uh, to, to, to be their neighbors, mm. to come in here, because those are the people who get the masters of this world to come in and live next door, sure. and then they keep the tourists coming here. That's, those are the, but the key thing, Google, is let's plan and do stuff. We mustn't plan and wait for 10 years, and then we dust off the plan, you know? Implementation. Just Precisely. implement and fix up things. Plan, implementation, and making sure that we stay on top of it. We've certainly outlined there are quite a few initiatives that have taken place, and of course the foundation of today's conversation was an overview as well of the uh, progress that has been made since we uh, uh, initially saw some of the developments unfolding back in 2010, 2013. But as we wrap up the conversation, unfortunately we are limited for time. As mentioned... The city of Durban has gotten an extension to host the tourism in Daba for the next five years. To make sure that we don't have the same conversation within the next five years, I'd like to find out from my panelists what it is that we need to ensure that we work on, uh, and very proactively so, within the next five years to change the narrative so that we do have a uh, Durban that's as competitive as Miami, seeing uh, larger counters and players coming in through uh, the aviation sectors that we have in. Hamish, let's start off with you, and we'll make our way down the panel. No, great, thanks. Um, and I'm very encouraged to hear what Philip was saying. And um, I think for us, we work as a very close team. The uh, Durban Tourism team is on our group, um, the, the route development team. So, um, I, and, and really the big thing we're going into now is joint marketing exercises with the airlines to go and do, um, we're going over there, we're seeing, we're meeting their customers, we, we're trying to stimulate uh, tourism on their side of our key partners. Uh, so it's to play our part as a route development committee to keep on top of all of these things that are happening, the new branding, um, and for us to be responsive on the airline side. So I think that's really where we will play our role. Responsive was a key word that you used there. Uh, Marcel? So I guess there's two points I want to make. Firstly, I don't think we need to, we should underestimate the importance of Indaba staying in Durban. So we, we've got thousands of hotel rooms in every city. It, it's commercially indifferent to us where it goes, but it is so important to Durban. It's the opportunity to bring the seven, eight, ten thousand, whatever it is, buyers into the city to show the city. As you talk about talk up the city, you can't do it if you're not here. This is the one event where you get everybody here. We hosted a party last night at, at Elangeni. We had 200 of our biggest buyers on the pool deck looking out at the city. I can't do that in Joburg. I can't do that in Cape Town and, and sell the city. So, so that decision to put in Derby here for the next five years is a good decision and it needs to be used to its best. And the, the uncertainty around it was a bad thing. We need to settle it down and, and make it work for Durban. At the risk of creating a rod for my own back five years down the line when you come back and ask me, I think the one other thing we as Soho are very keen to crack is Chinese market. You know, we have a, a fairly big shareholder in our, in our structures um, uh, being h and I think the Chinese market is just an enormous potential. You have 100 million outbound tourists. They, they are some of the biggest spenders. Um, we have a really big casino in Durban, which we're busy uh, renovating and expanding and so on. If we can crack that market, I think it's a big game changer for how Durban works. Yeah. Um, so, so that's an area we're going to focus on the next five years. I think with you know, the shareholder that owns a part of us is also one of the biggest airline operators. If we get that access into here, I think you're going to change Durban completely. Majaji? For me, three things. Uh, one, I think, is the, the partnerships of Durban Tourism, of KZN Tourism, the Duvet Trade Park to work together and embrace technology to market the city of Durban. 
that, that'll be the first thing. I think the second thing is got to do with creating new entrepreneurs with new opportunities to innovate the, the product offering of, of Devon, Kwasulu Natal to the world and go and seek new markets. I think the third thing from an endeavor point of view, it's really to make sure that this show takes a different shape next year. Mm. That I was speaking with uh, Philip yesterday and I said, Philip, my friend, when we come and contract with you, uh, I'm now speaking as, as a tourism board member, Please come up with innovative ways of how we can creatively innovate in Daba next year. Because we can't do it, do it the same or same world. We, you know, taking Daba to the street or whatever, take it to the harbor, whatever, you gotta really create that uh, um, interest for the buyers to come and say, we're gonna go to Devon this year. The formula is looking different, we're excited. Because otherwise, you're gonna be sitting in a stand and sitting here, same or same, it's not gonna work. And Devon has the opportunity to do that very well, better than anybody else. Exactly. Keep it fresh. Mm -hmm. Philip, very briefly. Yes, well, I think what one would be taking back from the conversation here is around the cleanliness of the city. We commit ourselves that the city, the program is starting in June. Um, we, I, I think um, private sector will raise its voice when we, we implement that project. Secondly, is what uh, Machach is talking about, which is um, the hosting of INDABA for the next five years. We have to innovate. Um, I think when Dumile was here, there was a big talk about innovation. We have to innovate. Thirdly, um, is again on Indaba, um, is that it has to be here. I mean, this thing of bidding all the time, uh, I think it's a waste of time. Yeah. Let, let's keep it here and let's have private sector saying so. Let's have private sector saying so that they want it here in Durban. That's a strong call. We'll have to leave it there for today, but a powerful note to leave it on. As we've heard, uh, strong voices and strong uh, opinions with regard to uh, the development and positioning of the city of Durban as a prime destination. And of course, uh, the common vision is what needs to take place. Partnerships have obviously been highlighted to ensure that we tap into all the elements that need to be addressed to ensure that uh, the conversation is different within the next five years. A big thank you to my panelists and the audience members for joining us over the, no the last hour. To my panelists, starting closest to my uh, right, Philip Sitole, Deputy acting deputy city manager of Durban and head of Durban Tourism, Maja Jiramawela, CEO of uh, Tourism Business Council of South Africa, Marcel von Olok, CEO of uh, Tsoho San, as well as Hamish Erskine, CEO of the Dubai Trade Port. A big thank you once more for all of you for participating as well as sharing the voice on social media. Again, you can keep the conversation going on social media streams and ensure that you too are a participant in ensuring that we reshape, rethink and re-engineer Durban as a prime tourism destination. From myself, Gugule Tutele and the team, it's goodbye for now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so much, everybody. We'll